Right, yeah, this used to be on the water in the city line. Oh, this is the last Victoria Land train that was in service. Yeah, this is the last one that was ever in service, I think. Which is now on the Piccadilly line. Yeah. Oh yeah, the rest of it is on the Piccadilly line. Um, it's got a battery. It's an engineer's locomotive. It was towing engineering train to mend the track and what have you. When the current's turned off, it can run on the batteries. When the car is on, you can run on and pick up the electricity from the third rail. Mm. And also, we, we charge the battery that is being used on the battery use. Mm. Today, you still see them around if you're at the right time of day, you know, late at night. Late in the morning. Look, uh, or early morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and they're similar to the old This is a pre war one, in. but they, they haven't changed much in the. Yeah. Well, all you've got to do is fill them up with batteries, and you're right, they're more, more modern Battery locomotives. It's still, right. still a very useful tool to run around the ground uh, system. 1972 stock. It's got the Piccadilly line map. Oh, Northern line map, sorry. He's used to run on the Northern line. And then the prototype of the trains that are going to run in the Central line as well. I'm actually seeing it in real life now. Another one of these engineers trained in the livery before they went yellow. I mean, yellow is a sensible colour because it stands out. They had this dreary colour before the war, maroon. Mm. But this has got a special purpose. It's an old 1924 um, underground train, cut in two of them, cut in two and joined together. So you've got a driving compartment at each end. Mm. It's got brushes. Mm. And it's to sleep, sweep the sleet or ice off the electric rail. And I couldn't understand, you know, being... Um, sleep locomotives. Yeah. I couldn't understand why, um, if they had to sweep the ice off the electric rail, what about the rails this is running on? So they reckon the weight of it broke the ice up anyway, so on, on, on the rails it went on, but of course you don't get any weight on the electric uh, rail. Now I think CO52... And my truck's and look who's driving it. Her Majesty the Queen. Oh, yeah. She, she opened the Victoria line in 1969. That's the one that's over there. She actually drove it. I mean, it went to Oxford Circus. Uh, but having said that, wow. being that was right. our first automatic underground line, all she had to do was press a button and it went. No, <laughs> no replacement on yeah. See, this is the prototypes and um, central line train. Yeah, 
this is a very bold experiment. They had a red one, a blue one, and a green one. These were cover board. You notice this green inside as well. The reason the colour's so pronounced is they wanted the passengers to remember what one they were travelling on, whether it was red, blue or green. They wanted anybody who had any connection with this, the driver driving it, the engineers, the station staff, to point out or any good points or any bad points. Because they had these three trains to get all the good points out to design the next generation of underground train that you've got running on the Victoria Line today. You've got these silly handrails up here, but the principle, when you when we go down to CO52 and go on there, that principle is there, but it's a complete round, well, not individual hand holes. These mm. are not round, not very comfortable. Not um, and of course you've got litter bins and you wouldn't have litter bins in an underground train today. Mm. You've got them in National Rail because they're not deep under, but because of these are deep underground, you know, as we've had one or two incidents with them, you know, mm. underground, um, it just not, you know, makes it worse. Um, so, you know, no uh, litter bins, but... No, it's quite an interesting train, I think. It's the fact that they, because they, they're not cheap trains, and they had three of them to get mm, the best yeah. out of them. And we'll walk on and have a look at them. Um, this one, by the way, goes out on the underground. Oh, this one goes on the yeah, underground. Yeah, yeah, the 1938 stop. The 1938 Bakerloo line. If you've been here this time last week, it was out. Oh, yeah, so this was out being tested last week. Yeah, this one was out being tested last week. I'm going to end the video soon. We've got no electric in here. So he has to get up a bit of speed and he has to come across points and, and he can do it and glide it in here. I've seen him glide it right up to the end and I've seen it stop down at those doors and then we have to go and get the forklift and tow it in. That forklift is very powerful and we've now got proper really sort of bar for it. One time they slung a bit of rope around it, but it's health and safety is caught up with yeah. it. This is the era they were experimenting with no paint and it took them 20 years to sort of realise it perhaps wasn't a very good idea. That's clean. It goes into the aluminium and you can't get it out. If you'd put, done it, if they'd done it on a train with paint on, you'd have cleaned it. So, you know, I mean, this is a 1972 Northern Line. Another thing that's came, has gone is wooden flooring because of the accident at um, King's Cross, the fire. We don't have any wood anywhere now. And they had to apply to the train floors as well. So, um... You can see these on the Bakerloo line now. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's interesting you say that because these were, when they were withdrawn, they were withdrawn because the Northern Line had some of these running right. and they needed replacing. Now, do you replace those with the next generation train that were running with these or do you replace all of them? They decided, I think quite rightly, replace them all because it does cause problems when you're running too tight. Yeah. But yeah. some of them, these, they needed for the Bakerloo line, so they refurbished them, took the uh, wooden flooring out and did all the necessary. Mm -hmm. And sadly, you know, like this one we've got here, but the rest of them went for scrap. But they were fairly early on, but some of them, you can't why they ended up on the Bakerloo line. Yeah. And uh, paint, uh, they're painted, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Well, like CO52. CO52 down there started off... Um, the Vic Victoria. Yeah, just like this. Like yeah, on the Victoria. Yeah, on the Victoria that one is slightly line. older though. Yeah. That one is 1967, this one is 1972. Yeah. And that's 62. Yeah. And that's 62. Yeah. But this has been, been refurbished midway, so it's 40 years with the life. And you can see the difference. The flooring has been changed to the composite material from wood. You've got these now hand rails going all the way along. The rails, they decided, you know, the grab rails would be the same colour as the. Uh, Brings back Railway, memories. Uh, the line on the underground map. Good, isn't it? Just brings so, back memories. Yeah, this is a refurbished one. It brings back memories. <laughs> <laughs> and 
I had a little girl on this the other day and I'd shown them that picture of it down there with the Queen in it. And I said, it's down the end there. And she was really over the moon, the fact that we've got this train here that the Queen had been on. <laughs> I said, all right, I go, I took over. And she stood there and said, I'm standing where the Queen stood. <laughs> <laughs> she was going really over the moon, the fact she'd done that. Wow, the Queen actually went in this train. Anyway, we're going to cut off. I've only got 10% of my fence, so please like, subscribe, and please.